Hi everyone, my name is Jillian Ranny and I'm a fisheries biologist at the Confederacy of Mainland Mi'kmaq under the Department of Aquatic Resources and Fisheries Management, uh, which houses the Mi'kmaq Conservation Group. So before I get into my presentation, I just wanted to first acknowledge that I am recording this in Mi'kmaq, which is the unceded ancestral and unsurrendered territory of the Mi'kmaq people. So our chain pickerel project at MCG has been going on since about 2017, 2018, and we decided to start the chain pickerel project based on community concern. So at MCG and CMM, uh, we serve the mainland Mi'kmaq communities here in Nova Scotia. So there are eight communities in the mainland, and most of our projects are based off of community concerns, community wants. And so the chain pickerel project came about because there was a lot of concern of the impacts of invasive species on species at risk, such as Atlantic salmon, which is Blamu in Mi'kmaq. And there's also concerns about their impacts on trout, potential impacts on other species, such as eels. And so we really just wanted to take this concern and make a project around it and investigate what was going on in the watersheds that we primarily work in and in the watersheds around the communities that we serve. So for our chain pickerel project, there are four different components which are funded through different avenues. So the first is funded through the Aboriginal Fund for Species at Risk, where we do stomach content analysis and invasive species outreach and education. We have an activity funded under the Habitat Stewardship Program, where we do environmental DNA surveys. Uh, through our partnership project with the Clean Annapolis River Project, we do more angler outreach and education on the impacts of invasive species on species at risk. And through Canada's Nature Fund for Aquatic Species at Risk, we also do environmental DNA surveys. And so I'll get into each of these different activities specifically. Under the Aboriginal Fund for Species at Risk, uh, like I said, we do stomach content analysis. And so we typically do angling and beach staining in the Stewiak River during the smolt run, which is typically May till the end of June to capture chain pickerel. And we do that in this location because we also operate a smolt wheel not far from this location. Now, unfortunately, due to COVID-19 restrictions and the time sensitive nature of this activity, we actually weren't able to complete it this year. So last year we had, when we caught chain pickerel, most of them were fairly small and none of them had Atlantic salmon smolts in their stomach contents. Now that's not to say that there aren't chain pickerel predating the smolt. It was just the chain pickerel that we caught didn't have any smolts in them. So we had planned to extend this project and go to several different sites this year to get a more uh, scientific data collection. But again, this activity was canceled. So we're trying to rework the allocated funds for this activity into another educational piece around invasive species and their impacts on species at risk. So another thing that was under AFSAR was our chain pickerel cookbook, and I'll touch on this more in the uh, outreach and education video, but it was launched on October 23rd, and so it's now available for download on the MCG website, uh, and you can also go to our Facebook page, and there's a direct link there. So this was super exciting because this has been a long project that we have been working on. Under the Habitat Stewardship Program funding, we were doing eDNA surveys at 10 sites to determine the presence absence of chain pickerel prior to remediating barriers for fish passage. So essentially we wanted to know if before we open these barriers, were there chain pickerel upstream and downstream, were they only on one side and not the other? And this was going to help us determine if we should open up this barrier or if it's a good thing. So from all of our results, we determined that they were all negative. So we used uh, the eDNA backpack sampler to complete all of our samples, and it was a really great tool to use. Um, now all of our results were negative at these sites, which is an interesting result, and we'll have to take that into consideration um, before opening these barriers because we are aware that there are chain pickerel at some of these sites as we have visually seen them. So we're curious as to why the eDNA didn't pick them up. Um, it could be for several reasons, but uh, it might also have just been environmental conditions as well. The water levels were quite low this year, and so we think that maybe the pickerel weren't able to get up uh, through some of these, to these different areas and tributaries of the main uh, Stewiak River. So this was all done in the Stewiak River watershed as well. 
The next is our partnership project with the Clean Annapolis River Project. So through our outreach and education with Clean Annapolis River Project, we've been able to install uh, invasive species signs in a few different locations. This one was installed at Grand Lake, which is uh, Oak Oakfield Provincial Park. So had one installed at the Stewiak River Park, which is great because this is also one of our sites. So it's really nice to have this invasive species sign up at one of the locations where we actually do our field work. Uh, we have another sign planned for install as well at Shorts Lake, which is a very popular fishing spot. So we're hoping that uh, these signs will get a lot of eyes on them and increase people's awareness about invasive species. And so lastly, we have the Nature Legacy Fund portion, which again is eDNA work at 12 different sites to determine the presence and absence of chain pickerel. And so we're, we have done this activity and we're now just awaiting our results. And so this information is just going to help us uh, just to know the presence of chain pickerel in different tributaries of the Stewiak watershed. So hopefully between the eDNA surveys conducted here and the ones we had done under the Habitat Stewardship Program, we'll be able to have a good idea where chain pickerel are located throughout the entire watershed. So Wallalio and thank you. That's just an update on the Chain Pickle Project at MCG.